Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. If you knew in a moment you were going to die, how would you feel? For many people, that is the worst news that they can hear. They would be stricken by panic. They would want to weep. They would be fearful. They wouldn't know what's going to happen to them when they pass away. Some might think, well, I hope that it's death is just that over and done with and there's no more. Others may hope of some utopia. Others might be fearful of some eternal punishment. What was Paul? Well, Paul knew the truth. And Paul knew because of the grace of God, because of Messiah's work on that cross. He understood that the only way to escape that eternal punishment, and people ask me so frequently, Brooke, do you believe in a literal hell? Yes, I do. Many people will say, well, you know, hell's just eternal separation from God. It is that. That is true. But it's more than that. It's not just an emotional pain, not just an emotional, I regret not receiving Messiah. It is darkness. It is torture. It is fire. It is eternal condemnation in a torturous manner. And the only way, the only way to escape that is by faith in Messiah Yeshua. As I said a few weeks ago, people, when you speak about the gospel in that way, they will tell you that, that you are a religious or a spiritual bigot. It doesn't matter what other people say about you. See, we talked a few weeks ago from the book of Daniel. And that name Daniel means God is my judge. So you know what's important to me? What God is going to say about me. Not what other people say about me. What difference does it make? He is my judge, not them. I don't care what terms, you know what? People are free to say anything they want about you, about me, about others. That's fine. They have that right. Don't worry about that. And don't allow these comments that you are a bigot or that you are what's happening now. If you take a stance for biblical truth and say, I believe that marriage is proper only between one man and one woman. And this same-sex marriage and homosexuality and lesbianism, that that is an abomination before God. God hates that, and it is a strong abomination. It is sinful to Him. People, I see religious leaders, biblical teachers, say, well, you know, if you accept the Bible, then we have that this is not the best way. No, it's, it's not, not the best way. It's an abomination. And they want to move off that subject and say, you know, God loves all people. What I know is that God teaches me to love everyone. Obviously, that's true. We don't, don't hate someone because of sin. We hate the sin. And it's because that we love them that we want, want to speak truth. If there's something better, if there's something that is pleasing God rather than is a activity that brings his judgment, wouldn't we, out of love, want to share that? So people can call us racist, homophobias, whatever. They have that right to call us that. So what? We need to be people that speak the truth. And you know what? When you speak the truth, not your truth, but biblical truth. Don't be foolish like Pontius Pilate and say, what is truth? Or what's becoming popular today, and it's just an abomination as well. 
when people say, well, that's your truth, I have my truth. No. Truth is everyone's truth. They can reject it, but it's true. It is not true for a culture, true for a race, true for an ethnic group, true for a region. That's ridiculous. Truth permeates this world because true truth is from God. Now, we're looking here at the scripture, and Paul is speaking about death, and Paul has truth that he wants to share with it, and that is that he's not fearful. For Paul, death, as I said at the end of last week, is a gain. It is profitable. Does that mean that we want to just run and and die and commit suicide? Obviously not. That's foolish, and Paul's not going to do that. He's simply saying, I want you to know that death for a believer is not something bad. It is going to be a transformation, a journey into unbelievably great joy, pleasure, happiness. It is going to to, to transform who we are, how we see everything when we go and we are in the very presence of God. That's wonderful. But what does Paul say about that? It's far better, he says, but notice verse 24. We're in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 24. In this passage it says, but remaining in the flesh, meaning in this body, he says it's necessary for you. So Paul's not going to end his life. What he says is this. I understand. He says, I have been convicted by God that it's not my time to die. But rather, I'm going to remain in this body, in the flesh. And he says, it's necessary, necessary for you. So what is Paul affirming? He's affirming once more his commitment to ministry. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a commitment to ministry? If you don't, you are wasting your life. I'm going to say that strongly to you. If you are not committed to serving God, doing His will, practicing His truth, keeping His word, then you are wasting your life. And it is so tragic that so many people, they have lived and their life is for naught. They have no eternal significance. They haven't done anything that's going to impact themselves or others for the kingdom. When I speak about eternity, that's what I'm speaking about, the eternal kingdom. Instead of experiencing that, what Paul says is a gain and is utter joy, what are they going to be experiencing? What we talked about earlier. They are going to be experiencing eternal condemnation and torture. God is a God of the extreme. He loves and he hates. He blesses and he curses. He gives life and he gives death. These these extremes. Because that is the biblical God. That's what we see. And Paul, notice the scripture. He is confident of something. He says, look again at verse 24. But to remain in the flesh is necessary for you. Verse 25. And this I am confident. He says, I've been convinced of. For I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you. And why does he do that? What's going to be the outcome? What is his objective? Well, keep reading second part of verse 25. He says, for your progression. Now, this is the same word he spoke of a little bit a while ago in a previous message. For the advancement, for the furthering for the progression of the gospel. What what does that mean? Just that the gospel is going to go forward, that it's going to touch more people. And he's using this as well, speaking about, and the context is spiritual maturity. That Paul, he writes to this congregation that he's not going to die. God has confirmed it to him, that he is confident that he's not dying right now, but that he's going to continue in ministry and the purpose of that notice what he says is that I might continue with all of you for the progression 
and the joy of faith. Now, a very important biblical truth is revealed here, and that's this. When the gospel is moving in your life, and I'm not just speaking about the plan of salvation. I'm speaking about God's grace. There's an inherent relationship between grace and the gospel. The word gospel simply means good news. It is good news about the redemption, the redemption that leads to a kingdom experience. And the means of that, that, that gospel, what provides the good news is the grace of God who achieved it, who dishes it out, Messiah Yeshua. But I want you to see that the emphasis here, what Paul is alluding to is the grace that the grace of God, which begins with accepting the gospel, continues on. It moves. It has an additional purpose, not just salvation, but also sanctification. And Paul says, as you move forward in that, look again at the text, as you move forward in that for the progression and also joy of faith. Now, that word, kara, is a, a wonderful, magnificent biblical word, joy. Because joy is what you're really seeking. You may not realize this, you may not be aware of it, but what you intrinsically, inwardly need is joy. And people, they are deceived by counterfeit promises, not the promises of God, not the blessings of God, but lies. And whenever we speak about lies, who should come into our mind? The father of lies, Hasatan, Seville, Satan. And he's called the devil. Why? Because it comes from that word diabolical. He is diabolical in his schemes to deceive. And what does he want? Well, he wants one to suffer. Suffer what? Well, the word Hasatan, Satan, means adversity. He is the adversary. He wants you to suffer adversity, that is pain, sorrow, disappointment, all things in that vein. And what does God have for you? He has joy. So people, in an attempt to, to find joy, they, they embrace alcohol, drugs, a, a lifestyle that they think is going to be satisfying, a pursuit of possessions, a pursuit of fame, whatever it might be, notoriety, achievement, all those things leave a person empty. No, joy only comes, and this is what he's talking about, as there's a progression of the gospel. What does that mean? Not that simply I receive the gospel. I confess my sins. I acknowledge them. And I trust in Messiah Yeshua, his death upon that tree, his shedding of his blood to be the payment, the justification of all my sins so that I can have an eternal relationship with God. Now, that's part, that's foundational to the gospel, but the gospel's more than that. It is good news about the kingdom and that I, and Paul's going to go here, we'll see this in this epistle to Philippians. He is going to begin speaking about citizenship very unique word we'll come across it in a few weeks he is going to be speaking about citizenship in the kingdom of God and what joy comes from is when we live as good citizens of the kingdom not in the kingdom that's not gonna be an issue when we're in the kingdom we're gonna have this new body this glorified body that can only do kingdom things it's now I'm speaking about now that we need to live out kingdom truth and when we do that every time that we embrace kingdom truth in our life and we behave according to kingdom character what's the outcome of that this is what he's talking about there is going to be a progression of joy the progression of the gospel leads to the progression of joy more joy that comes from what faith now faith here again we hear that word faith and we think believing but realize biblically there is a connection between faith and obedience so can we say this by faith I am saved that's true can we 
we substitute the word obedience? By obedience I'm saved? No, we cannot. We're saved by faith, not by obedience. But faith, biblical faith that saves, leads to the outcome of that is obedience. And when we progress in faith, when we walk in obedience, that is going to be an outcome. A particular outcome is going to be manifested, and that is what we see here, joy. Look now to verse 26. In order that you're, many Bibles will say rejoicing, but it's boasting. Now, boasting, when we boast of self, it's not good. But when we boast of God, it is rejoicing, praising, but it's literally the word boasting. In order that your boasting abounds, where? In self? No. In Messiah Yeshua, in me. Now, what does that mean? Paul's saying that, that his ministry purpose is that people might boast in Messiah. He is conveying to the reader that what his life is about is impacting others to exalt, to be thankful, to give praise, to rejoice in Messiah. That's why he's come and willing to be in prison because he wants others to boast in Messiah. That's his purpose. And through me and my coming again unto you. What does he mean here? He's not a prima donna. He's not saying, oh, you guys are going to boast in, in, in praises because I've come to you. That's what he's saying. He's saying this. You guys are going to be boasting in Messiah because he's a deliverer. And I'm a, a manifestation of that. I'm an example of that. So Paul's not putting the emphasis on, wow, he's coming and that's going to cause all this joy. No, what Paul is saying is this. I'm going to come to you, and because of the fact that God's faithful, because Messiah was one that released me, that he brought about this freedom to continue his ministry, to continue investing in this congregation, you are going to boast in Messiah. That's what he's saying in this passage of Scripture. Look now to verse 27. Now, in verse 27, we're going to come in contact with that word I mentioned earlier. It is so important this word. He says, look at verse 27. It begins with monon. Monon is a word that means only or just. So he's talking about a, a primary thing. Only that, this is how we can understand it, that worthy. So he says there is something that is worthy. Something that is of great significance. He wants us to focus in on only just this now here again when we translate it it's hard to to bring out the emphasis sometimes and in trying to make it so readable for people we sometimes lose the significance so the first word here look at verse 27 only next word worthy he's saying this is what's worthy this is the thing that you should be focusing in on that that the gospel of Messiah, that it does something. Now, some will say, let your conversation only be worthy of the gospel of Messiah. That's how most translate it. But the word conversation isn't here. It's the word, let me give you the first half of the word, politic. What's politic? It comes from the word political. That's where we get that English word. So many English words derive from Greek and Latin. So this is the word that we get the word politics from. And politics speaks about government. It speaks about uh, citizenship. And that's what this word does. It speaks about living as a good citizen. So what Paul is saying here is very simple to, to, to understand when you look at it in Greek. He says, only this, this is what's worthy that you live as citizens, a proper citizen. What citizen? Well, we're going to find out that our citizenship is in, Kev and in heaven. We live here in the body, but we belong to the kingdom of God. And what Paul is saying is, let your behavior, and it's the focus, 
only this, that your behavior reflects your citizenship. This is the purpose of the gospel. This is what it's about. And he says, be this way, live this way, in order that I come, whether I come and see you, or whether I'm absent, that I should hear the things concerning you. What things? He focuses on one. That you stand in one spirit and one mind, contending together, struggling. This is a word for war that you contend together for the faith of the gospel. Now, here's the takeaway from this passage. He's saying this. The primary objective, what is worthy of someone who has received the gospel, is that their lifestyle reflects a kingdom citizenship. And it's when you do that that you are really contending, that you are warring against the others, that are against the gospel. This is the primary objective. So my counsel to you is this, that you would pay very close attention to verse 27. It is a verse of scripture that we could spend an entire program on that one verse. It is foundational. It is that only thing that is worthy for one that's received the gospel, that they might live a kingdom citizenship out in this world and when we do that we are striving together warring for the 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 message of the gospel verse 28 and not being fearful of anything by the opponents or enemies now here's what Paul says he speaks about the fact that that we're in spiritual warfare and that we have to take a stand firm for the gospel. And in doing so, we read that there are opponents, there are enemies. And he says, do not be afraid of them in anything, in nothing whatsoever. And when you demonstrate that faith, he says, which is to them a manifestation, it shows their defeat. So when you walk in confidence, it manifests their defeat that you have what? You have that sure expectation of a kingdom experience. And to you, now he says in regard when you behave in this way, it manifests their defeat, their destruction. But for you, notice what he says, it is salvation. What's that word salvation referring to? Victory that it manifests your victory, and this victory, he says, is from God. That to you it's been granted, and this is so important, verse 29, and to you it has been granted, and that word granted contains the word grace. Most people don't know that. They don't pay attention, but if you do a good study of that word, it's been granted to you by means of grace. Not just that you would believe, notice what he says, that it has been granted to you in behalf of Messiah, not only to believe in him, but also in behalf of him to suffer. Did you hear that? Now, this is what we need to understand. Part of a, a credible lifestyle that is rooted in gospel truth, biblical revelation, that you believe in him, and it's when you live out that faith that you are going to also suffer for him. Paul is a living example of that. And let me be very clear about something. That is going to become normal too. Remember the scripture speaks about the time at the end when Messiah is going to separate the sheep from the goat and to see who really is a believer and who's not just because your name is is on a membership role doesn't prove that you're really a believer have you accepted the gospel into your life really if you have you're going to be growing in faith you're going to take that stand for the gospel you are going to depict a kingdom citizenship
and therefore there is going to be opposition there is going to be enemies against you that's what the scripture is saying and one who really knows God we're not going to be fearful of anything and it's our confidence this assurance that is going to manifest their defeat and our victory and therefore he says look at this verse verse 29 unto you it's been granted by grace we could say in behalf of Messiah not only to believe in him but also in behalf of him to suffer and he says and this conflict the same conflict that what Paul is having the same conflict that that I have he says that you have known in me and now you will hear in me so he says you've seen in the past how I have opponents how there are those who are at war with me and he's in chains and shackles right now in prison because of that he says I I'm not afraid I'm not fearing death I am living out a proper kingdom citizenship I am standing firm and he's admonishing them to do the same thing to stand firm for the truth of God and in doing so that confidence it manifests the defeat of the enemy now perhaps to others but here's the key to themselves when they see that all their attacks against you that you don't take them to heart that they are not something that is going to defeat you demoralize you discourage you but you stand confidently knowing that this world's passing away I'm just here for a moment my life's a vapor and then I go to be with my Savior and ultimately I'm going to have that eternal kingdom experience so what I go through here it's it's not all that important it is just here today gone tomorrow life is just that that passing through vapor but I'm focused in on the eternity my hope my joy my future is a kingdom future and when you live with that commitment with that that assurance that type of faith your life is indeed going to be transformed and you will be a recipient of knowledge and discernment and that you will see your faith move forward into that which is so pleasing and precious to God. Well, I'll close with that. Until next week, may God richly bless you. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. Thank you.